Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Welcome to London. I'm here at the Dorchester Hotel. It's absolutely amazing. It's a place where also Bond was born and introduced. It has an amazing history. Add today to that because I was able to speak to David Dankick. Now, David is and does play Valdo in No Time to Die. Yeah, that, that scientist, he's a bit of a baddie, but he's also a lot of fun. And I had um, some time with him to really pick his brain, you know, the inspiration behind the character and the choices that were made in a relatively serious movie. Armed with some production notes that they gave me, armed with my questions, now you get to see the interview. Check it out. David, thank you so much for making the time for this. Of course, David. Uh, so first of all, I've got to start off, congratulations on the performance, but mm. congratulations on the success of this movie. It's, it's a global explosion. It is, yeah. No, I'm very happy, I'm very excited and, and proud to be a part of this. Uh, it's been such a great experience. Yeah, and the amazing thing is you got butts in cinema seats after a pandemic. I mean, what, what's, what's that do for you? Uh, I'm just, uh, for me, uh, I'm happy that we can rekindle the flame and that people can start experiencing films in, in theaters again. Hopefully they can also over the winter. Well, let's see how that goes. Yeah. But it was uh, just for a great group of people to get back in the, in the movie theaters and to share an experience together uh, when you haven't done that for a year or two years. Uh, I think it just proves that the importance of, of, of theater, basically, um, and yeah. movies, um, and to share them together rather than sitting by yourself. So, uh, and for me, that I could be, uh, you know, a benefactor in that in my own way is, uh, no, it's amazing. Yeah. It's and, and Bond, you're right, Bond is a, um, I always like to say Bond is a community activity. It is. And one of the things that I, I like about now, with the Blu-ray coming out and the DVD, fans like me are going to be able to scrutinize Valdo, your character. So I do have some character questions for right, you, if you don't right, mind. Of course. We've got to dig into it. Yes. Um, so there are some, and I don't want to give too much away, but there are some serious choices made in this movie, mm -hmm. especially around the character of James Bond. Valdo adds, I'm going to call it a palate cleanser, mm -hmm. you know, some really appreciative moments as a fan to add some fun. So w was there really specific conversations between you and Carrie, like, there's some dire stuff going on. Valdo's got to bring the fun. Right. No, we never had, I mean, I was not a part of the analysis apparatus on doing, you need, we need this, had to happen then. I was just, you know, going out on a limb, having fun with my character. And also Barbara would, would tap in with, like, the dialect, for instance. We had discussions on how, how thick should it be, uh, the look, the hair, the, the, the mustache and the hair. 2021, not many men walk around looking like that today and age, but the idea was that he came out of an ex-Soviet uh, community and maybe he was... Uh, you know, less preoccupied about his looks as a scientist being formative in the 80s or 90s. So we would, you know, be creative around the character, making choices around that character. So I was all about that. I was not about the bigger picture. Yeah, and so I have to talk about the mannerisms because I've heard you talk, you took inspiration from some really interesting characters like Borat, for the yeah, ac accent, absolutely. All right, so we got that confirmed. It was a Borat moment. Well, it was. A, it was. A, it, I never looked at Borat just for the sake, but right. he made such an impression when I saw him. So he still lives on within me. Yeah. Uh, we didn't speak about that until after the movie came out. Okay, so it was a, kind of like a post channeling of that. Uh, Rick Moranis, yeah. the gatekeeper from Ghostbuster, with yeah, your definitely. Your cakewalk. Yeah, no, but also the way uh, when he was supposed to identify Anna de Armas in the Cuba scenes. Yes. When he says, "Are, are you my?" Now that was then cut from the script, but he would ask, "Are you?" Are you Hestia? Hestia or something like that. But it was Chuck. But me reading that and him not knowing if she was uh, uh, the person that he sh he should go to, right. got me thinking about uh, Rick Moranis talking to the horse in Ghostbusters. Yes, and the gatekeeper yeah, and the Gozer, or the key and master, all that stuff. You're you're adding so much more dimension to this movie, and it was already complicated. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah. All right. So um, no other inspiration, not Jar Jar Binks, nothing like that. You didn't want to go to the extreme because there's a fine line between fun and funny and goofy. Right. No, I th I must have been goofy at times, but it was cut. I mean, they, they I would uh, like, for instance, with the scene with the tomato soup, I had some improvisations saying that uh, you know, there's more comp something. I wash Ebola from in your blood running out from your face, yeah. and I would start laughing. 
I'm not doing that in the movie anymore. But uh, I did that at times, and it was probably a goofy, a goofy choice. Who knows? But they were, they would monitor my work and you know, take what they needed for the film. Can we talk about the tomato soup? Because I, I had an interesting discussion with a Bond fan the other day. They thought I was crazy. You can confirm or deny. Um, I found him to sometimes be an empathetic character because he was bullied by his colleagues. He was, yeah. Were you getting that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I wouldn't pass judgment on him. Uh, I mean, he's a scientist. Somebody else said he was the evil Q. Now, he's, he's all about the science. Like, the scene in Cuba where, when Spectre starts dying all over, he is, he, his reaction is kind of weird because he gets happy. Yeah. It's yes. not in a sadistic way, but he's happy that the science works. He looks at, oh, my, my invention is actually working. Yeah. He's not preoccupied about all the deaths. And that's kind of one of the character traits that make him a bit peculiar or goofy. He, he, he taps into different emotional uh, trajectory than many right. of us would do. We, we would be horrified if people started dying or yeah. maybe sadistic in it. But not this guy. He's different in that sense. By the way, one of my favorite lines that made almost the whole movie was when he answers the phone and he's like, you know, yeah, I like animals. Yeah, I mean, so that was an improvisation. We had that yes. too. That was, that was Carrie's idea. Say something as if pretending that you spoke to somebody else. So we had, I like horses or I like children. We had, uh, uh, or, you know, I would come up with all kinds of stuff. Well, you brought so much pleasure. You, you, you brought much needed fun and smiles yeah. to a very serious film. So thank you. From the bottom of my heart, from the Bond community, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.